Okay, welcome to our final session and our final few movies to fully realize this piece. And uh, what I've done is gone ahead and thrown in a background here. And uh, the reason why this is important now is because we're going to be working on our shading and uh, we might have put in a background that uh, kind of doesn't gel up with the, the rest of the piece. So kind of made my stage a little bit bigger here just to show you guys as much as possible and here's a specific example uh, the, the background is obviously very dark uh, here by this one boot but we've lit this boot up quite well uh, so what I would suggest doing is putting in some sort of uh, darker gradient that uh, moves upward and we can keep some of the lighter stuff in here but um, kind of blend it all in uh, together uh, overall though I don't think there's a a ton of things in here that uh, that don't work well with the uh, the background um, other than a little bit down here I think it's pretty good and um, obviously it does give you a, um, a much better sense of I, I think the size of the robot we've kind of got this destroyed city down here and we can add in some more kind of uh, dirty debris floating around uh, to kind of you know make everything mesh together Better. So that's uh, that's kind of what's ahead, and um, let's uh, let's begin breaking this apart. I've uh, I've got the robot currently, and I'll bring the timeline back in here. I've got them all in uh, one symbol, which a lot of times when I'm working kind of between movies here, I'll uh, I'll just go back and put them back into one symbol again, and just kind of merge every symbol onto uh, in, onto one layer. That's usually what I'm more trying to do. <laughs> Although the symbol does become kind of a keepsake for the state of things at that time. But uh, now I'm going to break them apart and I definitely want to uh, make symbols out of uh, main sections here. So for example, this entire arm and things like that. Uh, and this, this is actually going to end up helping us uh, shade things and kind of organize things a little bit better. So for example, let's go ahead and just take the, the boot here and we'll just call this boot. Uh, all right, let's be even more specific. Uh, boot. If I could spell boot correctly, uh, I'll go ahead and say this is the left side, and then um, shade it right. So go ahead and put that into one symbol. Then I'm going to double click inside of here, and let's see. I'll bring the timeline over here so it's a little easier to see. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a layer for the lights. Lights, all right. So anything, and we'll do this again with other parts. Anything that is lit up. Uh, we're going to want to put into its own layer, right? And then we'll call this original art. And then this will be the uh, gradient. Because obviously we don't uh, we don't want our, our gradients to affect the lights. We want to keep them as kind of strong as, uh, as possible. I'd, I'd say generally that's what you're going to want to do. So now let's go ahead and take the original art that we have and we're going to kind of have to assume here that we're not going to animate um, individual components inside of here. All right. Uh, if we were, then we'd want to separate them out or do something kind of a little bit different here. But I'm just going to assume, hey, you know, at, at most what I would do with this boot is maybe just kind of move it around a little bit. So um, that will, um, that's all going to be shaded as one entire piece is what I'm getting at here. So, and you know what, it's weird, why did I, okay, I thought that piece wasn't moving. All right, go ahead and uh, copy it all, paste it into place again, so we've got everything now on the gradient layer as well as this layer, and I'm just going to break it all apart, if you've forgotten somehow in this long series where break apart is, it's right up there, and uh, now let's go ahead and make it all into just one kind of temporary color, and go ahead and get rid of any sort of line data like that if you left any over. If you want to kind of really clean this up, you can... Uh, you can adjust places like that, which had a little bit of overlap. In fact, that's on the this layer as well. So let's duplicate that. Really doesn't matter. It's just kind of black going over top that black part. So, all right, now I've got our pink boot. Let's go ahead and um, color this guy up correctly. So I'm going to go over here to linear gradient, and that actually put on a gradient close to what I want. Uh, let's let's go and Let's see. Yeah, we could go ahead and keep that. Um, hit F, and of course you will get your handles for how that gradient is going to be applied. And then we can just spread this out. 
and we'll have to kind of keep coming back over here to the main timeline to see if we've uh, kind of blended this a little bit better. You don't have to go down to a full black. It's just I didn't think that uh, the way that we had it before was perfect. And I'm going to go with kind of a an angular or an angled gradient. Okay, so that's that's pretty much all I'm uh, looking to do with that. You know, in theory too, you could uh, you could take the same gradient, duplicate it, and put it onto a whole a different layer of its own, right? So now you've got two of them, and then play around with a secondary one. Let's see how that looks. Uh, but essentially what you're doing there is um, the same thing that you could do with a, a radial gradient right because a radial one would be or could be I should say adjusted so you can just kind of put the spotlight right there and of course you could pull this out so it affects how tight that cone is right And you can even squash it a bit. So that is kind of doing what I just did with the uh, the two gradients. And things like that could be fun to try. You know, make it like really dark at the knee. Uh, that's actually what I had in mind for that one. So let's let's not overdo that. We'll keep this one relatively well lit. And Let's see, what do I prefer here? Did I like the did I like the linear one or are we going are we going with the radial? Small things like this, I could sit here and adjust all day, so let's try not to do that, Justin. <laughs> Alright, I'll go ahead and lock the background layer just in case. And we'll call this boot. All right, so now whether or not we're looking for the Left or right, they're all they both begin with boot in the library. And let's pull that off of there. So again, if we want to be very uh, smart about this, we'll name our layers original art gradient. Oh, yeah, already got that off there. Lock it up and Probably I don't need to take this debris with me. So let's go ahead and take just deselect that. And I'll copy everything else, paste it over here. Okay, now let's go and find that radial gradient again. Just gonna paste that on. If uh if you want to change how the uh, the fill was applied, you can always go ready to lock fill and then just paste it in or click again. And that should apply the fill um, in a tighter area around the original artwork. Okay. Don't know why there's any up there. And now let's uh, let's bring this down. I think what we'll do is actually switch this to the linear one. And I'll just take down the pad just slightly. And maybe now I can bring them back together. Okay, let's let's see. A lot of times I like to see how things look without the uh, adjustments I made. Yeah, I think that's actually working. It's uh it's strange, it's almost a I was almost warping these um, these panels, but in a good way. It seems like they've got a little bit of a bend to them now. So I like it. Let's go with it. Uh, I would say if we were going to fine-tune this one more time, 
I might actually do the double gradient here and um, I'll just call this um, foot gradient and I'll lock everything else so we know what we're dealing with and then just take this tighten it up a lot and just put it right down here by the foot so really, in this case, you could probably take off all that stuff and not worry about it. All right, so it's just got a little bit more down there. OK. Uh, let's do this. I think you guys get the, uh, the general idea here. <laughs> uh, so go ahead and uh, combine parts and separate out the lights uh, put in gradients that you guys think um, should be there and of course we can always kind of compare our files together later or you can compare to mine and uh, I'm gonna come back in the same video and we'll talk a little bit about uh, just putting in some uh, shadows okay does everybody have their shading done now I do at least I think I do uh, so I'm just kind of making our stage a little bit bigger here so you can kind of take it all in and uh, I have enclosed a start file for this uh, session so if you want to kind of compare what you've done uh, to your shaded piece or at least I can look at that so it definitely adds a lot of uh, kind of easy dimensionality to this. Uh, these pieces feel a lot different, that's for sure. And uh, you can kind of go through here, and, or I can go through here and uh, see all the different parts that uh, I created. I left this light as its own um, sort of entity, I guess. And uh, let's see, there's our boots, all these guys. Um, for the most part, just uh, I just kept the light source over here on the, uh, the left-hand side and uh, worked with it like that. Uh, I did actually make this one a little darker on top with um, some light down there. All right, so that's, uh, I think, step one. Now let's go through and quickly add in uh, some uh, shadowing. And this is something that I thought we were going to spend some more time on. Let me just go ahead and get this out of the way. I thought it was going to be necessary for us to spend more time on this. But once I started doing it, I realized it goes pretty darn quick. So I'm just going to work within the symbols that I already have, and uh, I'm going to just make another layer. You can do it on top of every, everything else, and uh, this will just be a, a black swatch. I'm going to set the alpha to um, somewhere around 40%. I don't need a line around it, so let's go ahead and get rid of that now. And I'm just going to come through here and kind of just put in some shading where I, I think it uh, is appropriate. Okay. And some of this might not even totally make sense. I mean, I am going to try to, uh, you know, remember that my so light source is somewhere over here in the top left of him. But um, you're just doing things like this. And again, wh one thing I don't want to do is I, I want to avoid uh, covering up any of the lights that I have. So we've already got our lights hopefully on a layer of their own so that's not going to be a problem so I'll come in here and uh, kind of accentuate this uh, this little overhang And of course, this could give you a chance to uh, well, darken up anything that you think needs darkening up. Not sure what happened there. Uh, let, me, let me take the gradient off for a second. Oh, what layer was I? Oh, I was actually drawing on the lights layer. <laughs> Oops. Let me, uh, let me move that down to here. And uh, one thing I would just want to look at is How come my light, uh, or how come these lines ended up over top of that uh, that coil? Oh well, it's still a symbol. That's that's good. It um, this might have just been um, one of those strange things that happened. Let me just put that on. Uh, well, I can put it back on this original art layer. There it goes. Now it's over top of it. Okay. Sorry about that. 
So yeah, if you do see some springs like that, you could always uh, put some shadowing underneath there. Of course, if you um, if you wanted to make it really perfect, you could um, just take this shape itself and uh, break it apart, make that in the shadow, or you could add an actual filtered drop shadow. Again, I'm trying not to use those as much as possible because you know when you do zoom zoom in and out, the the filtering can change quite a bit. Um, so it's just a kind of a got you. Got to be careful of that. And here could be a fun one right here. Uh, let's take the shadow all the way back to right about here. And then I'm just going to use this to sort of split this boot a little bit more. Like that. And obviously, if it helps, you can always view this as a wireframe as you're going along here. Let's see how that looks. Yep, that definitely adds a, a whole other layer of dimension. And as you guys can see, I'm kind of, uh, in some sense, I might be avoiding texturing this guy. As you get, as some of you might remember, way long ago, we, uh, we talked about adding some um, bitmap textures in uh, way back in session two. And I'm actually kind of waiting to do that last because my hope is that we um, we can kind of underplay that a little bit. And I don't know why I hope that necessarily. I guess maybe I'm a little afraid it'll look too textured if we don't uh, if we rely on that for our our shading or our kind of dimension of realism to it. So if we can add as much as possible before that. Hopefully we can kind of go subtle on those textures. Uh, let's see, what do we want to do here? Just something like this. I'm really not overthinking these sh shadows, by the way. Just kind of throwing some in, seeing what works. Yeah, and I think that does actually work. Here's a kind of obvious one down here. By the way, I did actually split this into two separate gradients. Uh, let's just go ahead and do something like that. Certainly don't want to line straight across, but uh, there it is. Let's call this shadows. And you could get fancy in there if you wanted. Uh, let's do this arm. actually spend a little bit more time over here. I feel like this shape could be just a little darker. Just to emphasize it's facing that other direction. And yeah, that's about right. I 
as for the uh, the head here, you know, I've already got this gradient for um, all this stuff, the top of it. Let me just go ahead and copy that. I'm just going to paste it in here, right on top of itself. Going to recolor it, and of course that's now covering up all of it. But uh, what I'll do is I'll just cut that in half, and that way we can just use that same shape. And really all that does is just kind of darken up that uh, that one side, which is all right by me. And what else? Let's do a little bit more work in here. If you guys remember, we actually had one shadow in there already from way back long ago. Uh, so let's go ahead and put in maybe a little bit more over here. This back part, I would love to shade a little bit more, but I think I'm going to have to just copy this. And I'm just going to do that same trick I did with the head. Just paste it down here. Go ahead and make it all black. Put it at 40%. And then I'll just kind of trim out the part that I, that I want to save. So let's go. I view this as a wireframe will be a little easier to see. There we go. All right, now I should have separated those two parts. So now I've only got this. And let's just go ahead and pull this out to here. That out to there. Pull that back in. And then I kind of focus on what I want to keep here. I think I'll probably just cut across right there right about there and then just pull that up a little yeah might do a little bit right in here too Okay. And uh, I think we're just about done. Let me put a little bit into this shape. Oops. Oh, I didn't mean to curve that. That's okay. I'll just do it to about there. And I'll probably just uh, also <laughs> make any little tweaks on my own. But anyway, here's uh, here's what we're kind of finishing with for the shading part of this. And I think he's definitely looking a lot more filled out than he was about 20 minutes ago.